the truth is that so much which is called conspiracy theory is actually conspiracy fact. Not all of it, but enough to show that um, the people that run the world are not the ones the news media tell us do. The New World Order is uh, a belief, I guess you'd say, the conspiracy theory of the New World Order is a belief that um, on the part of usually right-wing groups, I think, that uh, there is sort of a secret organization of, of uh, maybe the United Nations or, or something like that that uh, plans to impose kind of a one-world government on the entire planet. The New World Order wants to create a world currency, a world government, a world army, a world religion. And it's not of Christ, of Buddha, it's not of the Muslim faith, it is a satanic order. I think the most important first thing to say is that a, a policy for a New World Order does exist. That's often poo-pooed and made fun of in the mainstream press, and yet the reality is it's there. Where institutions of freedom have lain dormant, the United Nations can offer them new life. These institutions play a crucial role in our quest for a new world order. Their agenda is control. Control of our currency, control of our families, of our freedoms, of our religions. They want it all. There's nothing that you have or ever had or ever hope to have that they're not planning to taking away. They want it all. There are many aspects to it, but um, the key uh, agenda, and I would, I would emphasize, you know, we talk about conspiracies. What I'm talking about is not actually a conspiracy, not at its heart. It is an agenda. It is an agenda for the um, centralized control of planet Earth and all its people. Um, where the conspiracies come in is in manipulating that agenda into reality. At the heart of the New World Order conspiracy is the belief that ordinary life is somehow controlled by a mysterious secret society, intent on pursuing its own gains at the expense of the rest of us. If this is true, who are these people? And do they really have the power to control our lives? The New World Order theories are sort of what I call unified field theories because they try to bring every event that could ever possibly happen under one giant conspiracy theory. And usually behind the conspiracy, according to the theory, is uh, some secret group, some secret society. And uh, depending on who you talk to, it's usually a version of what's called the Illuminati. Now, the Illuminati were a real organization that did exist uh, in the 18th century in Europe. They were sort of kind of like the Masons. They kind of grew out of the Freemasonry movement, um, sort of even more secret than Freemasons. And uh, a lot of people think that they, well, they probably did have something to do with the French Revolution and, and that sort of thing. The conspiracy theory would have you believe that the Illuminati have continued to exist to this very day and maybe even existed prior to the 18th century, in fact, going back thousands of years. After I had identified the structure through which the world was controlled today and the organizations, many of them anyway, through which it was done, it became very clear to me, uh, and didn't take a genius, that this structure could not be put together in five minutes or five years or 50 years. It had to go back a very long time. The New World Order, it seems, goes back to the very beginnings of civilization itself. When you get back into the ancient world, you find a stunning common theme. Gods with advanced knowledge that created ancient uh, advanced civilizations which modern archaeology and uh, history still cannot explain. These gods, which appeared to be um, of, a, of a reptilian genetic stream originally interbred with humanity creating hybrid bloodlines which were a fusion of the gods and humanity. Identify 
take some of these facts that ex fact facts or factoids that exist only in conspiracy theory probably have no basis in fact at all. But I like the theory about the world being descended from extraterrestrials who came here about 4,000 years ago, interbred with some human beings and have been ruling the rest of us ever since. I like that theory because it has a science fiction eeriness and charm to it. Now, ancient Babylon appears to have been the center for this network and these bloodlines in the ancient world. When it moved across to Rome, that's when we had the Roman Empire. When it eventually moved across to London, the great British Empire expanded these bloodlines to the Americas, to Africa, to Australia, through Asia to China. And then when you start to do the genealogy to complete the circle of the people in positions of power today, like the presidents of the United States, for instance, and this is um, mainstream genealogy, not conspiracy research genealogy, you see the same bloodline coming up over and over and over again, and you realize the obsession the Illuminati have with bloodline, then pieces seem to fit. This Illuminati, which is sort of, uh, you know, a group of people who are smarter and better and faster and quicker than the rest of us, are pulling the strings. Now, if they've really been around for two, three, four, five thousand years, you kind of wonder why they haven't managed to, you know, take over the world yet. It's been a long time. When you um, put all this information together, um, the way the same bloodlines turn up in the positions of power, not just now, but way back in history, um, I've identified with different for, uh, sources of genealogical research a bloodline that starts in ancient Sumer in Egypt and comes up to um, George W. Bush and the Bush family and, and, and many other people in the world today, Al Gore as well. Um, and the people in it are some of the great names and changes of the world throughout human history of the last 5,000 years. It's unbelievable. Conspirologists see Illuminati symbols everywhere. It seems the Illuminati have been using the same symbols for thousands of years, and yet many of us are totally unaware of their existence. If you take a look at the backside of the dollar bill, it'll say Novus Ordo Seclorum, the new social order, and they have the pyramid. And that has nothing, not a damn thing to do with the United States of America. I was gonna take a look at, you know, a bill. And you can take a look on the backside of the bill and it'll say, uh, here. You can hardly see it. But it's Novus Ordo Seclorum the New World Order. It's what Hitler envisioned. It's on the backside of the United States dollar bill. The Eye of the Pyramid, which is also called the Eye of Horus, is the Eye of Lucifer. This is what we are facing. Well, as for the seal on the dollar bill, I've always found that one of the more absurd parts of conspiracy theory. If there was a conspiracy, why would they be advertising themselves out in public like that? A lot of conspiracy theorists seem to think conspirators go around doing two things, A, conspiring, and B, leaving clues behind so you can detect their conspiracies. That sounds rather ridiculous to me. Just to give you an idea of how black is white and topsy is turvy in relation to our perception of what's going on compared with what is, um, in New York Harbor is a lady holding a lighted torch, a Statue of Liberty. Statue of Liberty, land of the free. That's what most Americans, 99.9% .9 of them, believe that stands for. In fact, that was given to New York Harbor by French Freemasons who knew that it was an Illuminati symbolism of we control the show, we're telling you, but because you don't know the secret language and we've given you another version of it, freedom, you don't know what's going on. But a lot of that might have had to do with the fact that a lot of people in our government have belonged to the Masonic movement, uh, including the founders of, of this country. You know, George Washington was a Mason. There's a famous picture of him wearing his Masonic apron. And a lot of the signers of the Declaration of Independence were Masons. And I think 16 presidents, I'm not sure the exact number, but I think 16 different presidents have been Freemasons. So, you know, I mean, 
I guess when you, there's that many Freemasons in the government, uh, it's not surprising that you see these Masonic symbols every now and then. Now, does that mean that there's some Masonic conspiracy to take over the U.S. or, or the world? According to conspiracy theorists, this hybrid bloodline is active today within the major political and corporate institutions of the world. Through shadowy organizations such as the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderberg Group and Trilateral Commission, the Illuminati seek to preserve their bloodline and control the world. This is one of the best documented things in conspiracy literature. The number of presidents who have belonged to the Council on Foreign Relations is absolutely staggering. Working backwards, I can't remember all of them. Bill Clinton is a member, the president before him, George Bush was a member, the president before him, Ronald Reagan was a member, the president before him, Jimmy Carter was a member, and so on back. I don't know how many presidents they missed, but they got most of them. Richard Holbrook, Bill Clinton's peace envoy, Bilderberg Group Trilateral Commission Council on Foreign Relations. He answered to the Secretary of State at the time in America, Warren Christopher, Council on Foreign Relations Trilateral Commission. And the Defense Secretary in America he answered to, William Perry at the time, Bilderberg Group. They answered to the President Bill Clinton, Bilderberg Group Trilateral Commission Council on Foreign Relations. There certainly is a unity of thinking among this class of people. And I think groups like the Trilateralists and the Bilderbergers serve to, uh, you know, sort of iron out the differences between, you know, the, of opinion that might exist among a lot of a lot of their, their members, and form sort of a unified uh, outlook and policy, which then often gets translated into government policy when these same people go into government service as the Secretary of State or the President of the United States. So how do you get to join Bilderberg, the most prestigious of the secret societies? We tried to pick people who were going to have influence. That was the whole point of the thing, was to allow people who were likely to influence policy to learn more about the world in which they were living and to meet people whom they wouldn't have any opportunity to meet in the ordinary course of events. The agenda is to create the centralization of global power in all areas of our lives for a very simple reason. When you get to the core of this network of manipulation, out of very few people. Ever since the Bilderberg Group first met in 1954, the exact purpose of the talks has never been fully explained. The delegates meet in secret for three days of discussions, but nothing they talk about is ever revealed afterwards. The secrecy, or privacy it's better to call it, was well observed, although of course inevitably because the meetings were private, they gave rise to conspiracy theories on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, the American conspiracy theorists said it was a plot to undermine the United States. The European ones said it was an attempt to destroy left-wing governments all over Europe so that America could run Europe. But, of course, it was neither. Nonetheless, the annual secret gatherings of Bilderberg continue to attract suspicion. In 1998, the chosen venue was Scotland. On discovering this, one Braveheart journalist tried to get in. I had a tip off from a contact that the Bilderberg group were going to hold their annual summit here at Tunbury. I only had a passing notion of who they were. Um, I knew there was some sort of powerful group of men who, and women who met every year. Everywhere you looked within the grounds, there were either uniformed officers or other officers in, 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 in combat-type uh, uniforms uh, guarding the entire grounds. The, the place was literally sealed off. I personally was left with a very strong impression that uh, I didn't feel this was an entirely healthy thing. Uh, you know, to come here, to talk, make decisions, and then go away. One wonders, you know, what were they talking about? Uh, why are they talking about it? And, you know, how much do the decisions that they make here impact around the world? Why 
by uh, the Trilateral Commission, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Bilderbergers, and similar groups, why are they so secretive? I have pondered and pondered and pondered on that question, trying to think of alternatives to the conspiracy theorist's usual explanation. They're plotting nothing but unmitigated evil against the rest of us. And I think part of the answer is they are plotting unmitigated evil against the rest of us, and part of the answer is they're plotting things they don't want anybody else to know about for the same reason that all of us have things we'd rather keep private. Some of the fear, as I say, is basically jealousy. I've never noticed, actually, any fear with ordinary people at all. But, of course, it's in the interests of journalists to sell newspapers, and if they can invent uh, it conspiracies, it helps to sell a paper, so of course they do that. Conspiracy theories would seem to be about secret societies covertly running the world. But in addition to this, conspirologists also develop theories about overt organizations like the United Nations and NATO. It's a very common belief on the part of right-wing organizations, especially in this country, that the United Nations is some kind of uh, military political organization whose purpose is to, uh, to, to take over and to, to basically stage a military invasion of the U.S. and just use that as a springboard to establish this one-world government and that NATO uh, is, is the force by which they're going to do this. is housed right here at the United Nations. It uh, is global government. Ein Volk, Ein Reich, Ein Führer. One world, one race, one ruler. It's what Rudolf Hess talked about when he introduced Adolf Hitler. This is Hitler's dream come true. This is a nightmare. This is the tombstone upon all sovereignty for all nations for all time. The United Nations must fall for freedom to live. For institutions of freedom have lain dormant, the United Nations can offer them new life. These institutions play a crucial role in our quest for a new world order, an order in which no nation must surrender one iota of its own sovereignty, an order characterized by the rule of law rather than the resort to force. World War I, World War II were both created to bring about the United Nations. They're in the war business. Wars, like bridges, are engineered. This new world order is in the war business. And to create the war, they can then say that they want peace. They couldn't, this would never have been built without the, the, uh, the aid of World War I, without the aid of World War II. There's creating events in the world, like wars and terrorist um, situations, runs on currencies, stock market collapses, which create situations of problems which the public then demand that they provide answers and solutions to the problems, and then those who've covertly created the problems and got that public reaction do something, then offer the solution to the problem. You know, it's so easy to fit these events into this conspiracy theory template, this prefabricated conspiracy theory, that maybe there's another way of looking at it, you know, that's a little more different, a little more original, and maybe more enlightening. All the focus up until recently has been on the United Nations, and quietly groups like the uh, World Trade Organization were basically taking over control of international business agreements. Organizations like the International Monetary Fund and the uh, World Bank have basically been taking control of financing in the world and making dictates of how countries are to develop. I believe it was one of the Rothschilds said something to the effect once, give me control of a nation's currency and I don't care who, can, who makes the laws. Because once when you control the money supply, once you control the currency, you do have the ability to decide how the government behaves because they do have to react to uh, monetary pressures. I mean, money talks. So is this the ultimate Illuminati agenda? Are they controlling the global economy to control the world? 
Hundreds of anti-capitalist protesters are in Washington to try to disrupt meetings of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. At every street corner around the IMF and the World Bank, the demonstrators have set up human chains to stop the meetings taking place. The demonstrations against the IMF and all this were were a reaction to this centralization of power and, and sort of and a rebellion against the idea that economic policy, global economic policy, can be shaped by a small group of people who have vested interests in shaping it. And in a way, that's sort of the definition of a conspiracy. Even when discussing things like the United Nations and NATO and even the WTO, the IMF, the World Bank, I don't think it's productive to focus on these shells as though they are the problem. Because like it or, like it or not, this phenomenon is going to exist whether it's under these names or if they create new organizations. Um, I think the real bigger issue is that who are these organizations working for and what interests are they serving?